Hello friends, my name is Ari Thurger and today I'm going to talk about Ragnar Lothbrok. And speaking of famous Vikings, I hope you have enjoyed the introduction. It's from a company who produces wonderful Viking jewelry, so why not wake up the Viking in you and take a look at their products. Hurry up, because within the next 48 hours you have 40% off on the first line and classic collection. Right below in the description of this video or in the comment section you have all the information you need to visit them and also take notice the promotional code to use in the next 48 hours. When this video comes to an end, go rate the place. <laughs> I think I'm getting something for myself as well. Really awesome stuff. Now, let's start with our video of today. Ragnar Lothbrok. Who was he? A real historical character or a fictional heroic figure? I thought it would be interesting to talk a bit about Ragnar since he has become a very famous Viking this past couple of years with the TV series Vikings. And I'm sure uh, many of you would like to know about the truth as far as we can tell instead of relying on a TV show as being a reliable historical source. What we have to take in mind are two aspects. All the things that are said about Ragnar are obviously not true or even real, which makes us doubt about a real physical existence of this Viking. Ragnar's legends were written between the 12th and the 13th centuries, so it's a long way after the real Ragnar, which obviously makes us think about the amount of truth in oral traditions before being put to parchment. And precisely because of that, we have another aspect. Earlier medieval Frankish chronicles tells us about a Viking named Ragnar. In this case, the name is Regineri. He is indeed mentioned, but we cannot say with 100% certainty that this is the one, the famous Ragnar Lothbrok, who did all those heroic and fantastical accomplishments. In order to consider Ragnar Lothbrok a real historical character, we must find a real person, historically recognized by this name, who actually performed a significant uh, number of acts attributed to the legendary Ragnar Lothbrok. The main view nowadays, mostly thanks to the TV series and the social media that spreads the word, is that Ragnar Lothbrok was a real man, a notorious warrior and king who performed great deeds. Ragnar is mentioned in the Danish history Gesta Donorum by Saxo Grammaticus. He is also mentioned, obviously, in the saga of Ragnar Lothbrok, Ragnar Salda Lothrokar, and in the saga of the sons of Ragnar, Ragnarsson Thautr, and in the poem Kraukomal. With the exception of the Danish history, uh, which is a semi-legendary work with real historical content, the other works are productions from the 12th and the 13th centuries, but are considered fictional stories. And that's a real problem, because those are exactly the main sources about the life and deeds of Ragnar Lothbrok. Now, let's start with the name Ragnar. Historical records of the 9th century, the period in which, supposedly, Ragnar Lothbrok lived, there is only one single mention of a Viking with that name, a Viking named Regineri, which is the Latin form equivalent to Ragnar. This Viking died in the year 845 according to those historical records. Now, since Regineri died in France in that year, uh, he could not have participated in the later events which form the main part of the adventures of the legendary Ragnar Lothbrok. In addition, there is no evidence 
whatsoever that Regineri was the father of any of the individuals who were later declared children of Ragnar Lothrock. Thus, this Regineri, in great part, takes away the notion that Ragnar Lothrock existed. Also, in all of the sources I've mentioned earlier, there are loads of differences from account to account, with the exception of Ragnar's death, uh, which is told in the same manner, a so sort of executed in England in a pit filled with serpents. But the rest of the accounts of his life diverge and there isn't a clear line of events that give us the notion that indeed that's how he lived his life. Now, let's take a look at the name Hlothbrok. In the Danish history, Ragnar was the grandson of the king Sigurd Ring of Norway, having succeeded his grandfather and ruled over Norway and Sweden. In this version of the story, Ragnar first married Legartha, with, with whom he had three children. Later, he divorced her and went to marry Thora Björgothurt, uh, with whom he had two children. To be able to marry Thora, Ragnar had to kill a giant serpent or a dragon in, in other accounts. Uh, in this particular event, he wore furry pants, shaggy breeches, and that's where the name Lothbrok comes from. That's what it means. So he used these pants to protect himself from the bite of the animal. With this deed, he was known henceforth as Ragnar Harry Pants. In the series, Lothbrok is treated not as a nickname, but as a surname, and then in some passages, his supposed brother is named Rolo Lothbrok. Uh, his children, Jord Lothbrok or Ivar Lothbrok. <laughs> the Viking surnames were based on the given name of one's father. Uh, the children adopted the father's first name. This still happens nowadays in Iceland. So the children of Ragnar would have been named Björn Ragnarsson, or Ivar Ragnarsson, for instance, while Rolo would have been Rolo Sigurdsson. <laughs> but that doesn't really matter because Ragnar didn't have uh, a brother, although Rolo is a real historical figure, but was born almost 20 years after the death of Regineri, and he was the son of Ketil Flettonov, uh, flat nose. <laughs> anyway, in the saga of Ragnar, it says that he was the son of Sigurd Ring, king of Norway. Then he married Thora and Oslog, having two children with the first and four with the second. He also adopted, adopted children and had a couple of bastards. So in this saga, Ragnar was king of Norway and Denmark. In the saga of the sons of Ragnar, the previous lineage and marriages are mentioned but it says that he was only the king of Norway. However, there are no records of the name Lothbrok during the time when Ragnar supposedly lived. This name only appears in the records 200 years later and it comes alone, without any link to Ragnar. The name appears as Lothbrok in the Gesta Normanorum Decum in 1070, in which Lothbrook is called the father of a Bjorn Ironside. It was Ari, a writer who in the 12th century mentions Ragnar and Lothbrook as the same person. Now, one other aspect that I want to develop in this video, it stays for another video, but in the sources, the children of Ragnar are either mentioned as the children of Ragnar or Regeniri, or the children of Lodbroka, a female name. And for the past five years in the academic field, there has been a discussion that Lodbroka was a woman, but that shall be the subject for another video. So what do we have so far? In the TV series, Ragnar is described as being a farmer. He married Legatha, with whom he had two children, Kisla and Jörn. And with Hoslog, he had four children, Hübe, Hifar, Hvitserk and Sigurd. 
he has a brother named Rolo. And then after a couple of raids here and there, Ragnar became king of Norway. The series do not explain how Ragnar got his nickname. Some of his children are missing. Uh, he is given a more humble background. Uh, the character of Tora and her children are excluded from the series. In addition, the series add Rolo as brother of Ragnar. Also, in the series, it is said that Ragnar lives in the fictional city of Kattegat in Norway. Although, historically speaking, Kattegat is the name of the maritime strait uh, that separates Denmark from Sweden, being a geographic uh, location, not a town or city as shown in the series. In the historical sources, we have a 9th century Viking named Regineri, the Latin name for Ragnar, who died in France. He died precisely in the year of the first Viking siege to Paris, 845. We have a 10th century person named Lothbrok, who is the father of Abjorn Ironside. Then later during the 12th century, we have Ragnar Lothbrok as being the same person. And then we have Ragnar. In the fragments of the Annals of Ireland, there is a particular source of interest which is often related to the legend of Ragnar Lothbrok. There was a certain Ragnall, uh, son of Ofden, king of Norway. This Ragnall is mentioned as well as his deeds, but most importantly, he, this character comes before the foe of York to the Danes, which is during 866 and 867, but already after the death of Regineri. But this Ragnall is the closest we get to someone from Danish royalty who has done great deeds. Maybe it's possible that Ragnar and Ragnar Lodbrok were the same person, although the names are not equivalent. These are totally different names. Now, take these dates into consideration. 793 it's the Viking attack to Lindisfarne in Northern England. 845 is the first attack to Paris in which Regineri died. 867 the Danes occupy Jorvik, York. Regineri isn't the real Ragnar Lothbrok because he died between two major events in the history of Viking raids in which Ragnar as King of Norway and Denmark would have played a major role. And during Regineri's time, the king of Denmark was Horik I, which he himself is a semi-legendary Danish monarch. And Norway had no king yet until 872, Harald Fairhair. The sagas tells us that Ragnar was king of Denmark and Norway, but the, this union between both countries only came in the, in the 10th, 10th century with Harald Bluetooth. In conclusion, Ragnar Lothbrok becomes a 9th century legendary king of Denmark. It is possible that throughout the ages and in different sources, names got mixed and there was a clear confusion between the early Irish annals and the Icelandic sources and in between the Frankish chronicles. Ragnar seems more likely to be the product of a composition between several historical kings and Vikings. What I mean is, if there is any historical basis for the legend of Ragnar Lothbrok, most likely it is the result of a combination of two or more distinct individuals into a single figure with the characteristics of all of the historical characters of great renown that were the symbol of the Viking raider in many aspects. The thing is, Regineri existed, Ragnall existed, Lothbrok existed, but they are not the same person and their stories got mixed and a single heroic figure was created, Ragnar Lothbrok. And I do believe 
That was the exact purpose. To create one single figure to be praised as the, ind as the individual that represents all the traits and ideals of a perfect Viking, almost like a god, to be honored and to be a role model for the Norse peoples. A role model of bravery, honor, heroism. A timeless figure to be exalted that represents the Viking spirit, because Ragnar Lothbrok is a character that contains within himself all the brave Norsemen of the Viking Age. Ragnar Lothbrok is as if the Viking Age itself was represented in the figure of a single person. And in that aspect, I think that the TV series Vikings captured that. I think that may have been the objective of the creators of that TV series. To represent the Viking Age in the figure of a single individual instead of trying to pass on the idea that he was a real historical figure. Ragnar Lodbrok, in a way, is the equivalent of the English Robin Hood. It's impossible for one single person living that long and we already came to a possible conclusion that in the span of time in which Robin Hood existed, it was at least 10 different individuals using that name in different periods to continue the real Robin Hood's work. Or another example, the first Portuguese national hero is Viriato. We have accounts of Viriato for more than 200 years. It took more than 200 years for the Romans to fully conquer the country. It's impossible for one man living that long, obviously. Viriato was the title used by different Celtic Lusitanian chieftains that fought off the Romans. So, Ragnar Lothbrok became the exact same thing, a title, a nickname used by men of great renown who did great deeds in different periods in Scandinavian history. Just imagine, whoa, this man killed 50 men with a single swing of his sword while riding a flaming unicorn. He's a real Ragnar Lothbrok. Ragnar Lothbrok is the legendary hero that represents all the pain, suffering, challenges, honor, bravery, great deeds and great historical events of the Viking period. My dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video and don't forget to visit Vicky and G Jewelry and get your awesome Viking plunder. <laughs> Seize this opportunity of 40% discount on the next 48 hours and use your promotional code. It's great to be a Viking these days. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. See you on the next video. And as always, talk for you.